What's up everyone, my name is Matt Briers and welcome to the Flow of Combat. In this episode, we're gonna look at two escapes uh, for mixed martial arts or no rules combat when you're pinned against the ground or pinned against the wall or the cage. Now I have to create some space to rock up. I'm away, work my body, here comes more pressure. I may use a Kimura to break them out. Kick up. Boom. Or two on one and roll them over fairly easily. And come back. First thing we're gonna go over is uh, the technical stand-up concept and how it applies to the wall. The next we're gonna get in how to get out of side control uh, when people are punching you in the face. So check it out now on the flow of combat. Cam is gonna be right on top of me. So put your, you put your knees down so it's a reference. Okay? So his job is, is to give me pressure. Okay, just to have maintain the pressure. Let's talk about arms, okay? I have to really be worried about this hand. This is the hand that's close to my head. If I put my hand here, what's gonna happen? It's a fucking rain terror down on me, right? So I have to almost be, like, if we go back to basic boxing self-defense, I should have my hands near my face being really ca uh, careful. I'm also to use this knee, this leg, to create the space for my hips, okay? I'm also being very aware of his neck and shoulder. Now I'm using this to create a little bit of space. See, I'm on my elbow, and I can check his shoulder. I'm gonna rock up to my hand, okay? Pressure. Okay, he's still gonna be pressuring, okay? He's gonna be looking to grab my legs pretty soon because I just got him off my chest. The next available thing for him is his hips. If my hands are here, his wrist is here, it's great. Grab a hold of the wrist and keep it on the ground, but I still have to protect this side. Again, this is where a lot of power and punches are gonna come in. I'm a little worried about this side, but it's not as important as this one, okay? I will concede a little strikes to the back. All right, now I gotta get my weight higher, so I'm gonna almost push in, or if I can grab the rest, either hand is great. great. If I can use my far hand, it's awesome. Now I get my hips high. Now I can try to tackle, move a single leg, whatever. Now I've got a problem. He wants to rip my legs back out. Grab your legs, rip me out. Boom! That's what he wants. This may happen multiple times, okay? I get back up, same exact thing. Get to my knees, okay? Now the wall's my friend. I have to be careful. If I don't take care of these grips down here, all right? I may just do the same thing. I may walk up, he gets his hands together and rips me right back off the wall, all right? So this is where underhooks, Kimura breaks, two on ones is important because I had to get out this way. So how do you feel? You want to come to underhook, you want to try Kimura. No matter what, I'm going to start working my way up. All right, of course, he's still going to be on my hips. It's exactly what we were last week, okay? Two options here. I can try to dig for my underhook or I can be a complete dick and ass, little cross face and underhook, okay? I can also start throwing some shots here. I have to make sure that my hips are lower than his hips right now. If I get too tall, he's just gonna pick me up and slam me, right? I have to get down and hunker down so I can get a position where I can get back to, to safety. Does that make sense? Let's run the whole thing again. He's got pressure, okay? First most important problem, yeah, that motherfucker thing. I have to be careful, okay? Now I have to create some space to rock up. I'm defending everything. Sorry about the elbow. I try to keep him away, work my body. Here comes more pressure. I may use a Kimura to break him out. Now I'm off the wall. Does that make sense? It's very sequential. You have to look at it step by step. Without combat. I've got to really protect, work to get to my elbow my knee, deal with all this shit in here, but be a wide, stable base. My legs over here, it's not good, right? My legs are here, it's not good. I gotta be wide. I'm trying to keep my center hips down and underneath his, his hips over there. If he gets control of my hips, I'm going for a ride or get my legs set back out. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, you're getting off the wall. You're, this leg was in between his leg the whole time. Is that you want to be on the outside, or you, you were kind of aiming your top leg in between my? If I hey, did, uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, all right, that's why. So what move I did earlier is I come here. I escape a lot that way, and it's giving me my first big step. See how it almost stays there the whole time, so it's kind of giving me a structure. It just happens to end up being between Cam's leg. I'm not looking for that. I want base, something to push off of to get back to my feet. Turn a little bit and try to get a little bit of um, a rocking chair on my elbow, okay? So I'm actually thinking like I'm getting pummeled. I turn down a little bit, 
by getting my hips up, like I'm defending myself, and I'm gonna get my right elbow underneath me, it gives me a way to rock and chair up to my, el to my elbow. Gets my weight a little higher. Much, hard, much easier than, than doing that. Okay, so I balance, almost like cocooning. Get the elbow underneath me, rock up to my elbow. Now I use the elbow, and I get my knee to the wall. Once I get the knee to the wall, I push off the wall like someone's driving in, and feet up, and you use the wall to drive up. Okay, okay. I'm getting pummeled, I'm getting destroyed. All right, I'm shelling up, take as much damage as possible. I, I don't wanna stay here. So first I'm gonna defend, I'm gonna cocoon up, rock to get my arm underneath me, to my elbow, knee to the wall, push up the wall, and get to my feet. Again, I can't exaggerate enough how important it is to get out of those bad positions when you are driven into the wall or into the cage or a spot you cannot get out of and another human being is raining down fire on top of you. Uh, that has got to be the most terrifying, scariest positions to ever be in. Uh, God forbid there's two people using the wall or using any other object to help walk up and create some stability along the way, it's gonna definitely be to your advantage. So that was what the first video was all about, was how to use that wall, how to use a cage or object to get back up. Second, we're gonna deal with how to deal when you're completely flattened out um, in side control. And now, and people can hit you. Now there's a ton and ton and ton and ton of information on how to escape side control. In fact, I probably put a ton of fucking videos out on how to escape side control too. Uh, so this is nothing new. This is just how I personally apply, how, how I personally use and get out of most situations uh, when I have to. When it's, it's, it's not just play jujitsu, it's not just sport. So let's check out these escapes and see how they apply to your game. He's gotten everything nice and tight, all right? Which means the side control that I can't get his elbow in. I'm susceptible to hammers, punches, or submissions, and I've got a really big problem. One of the most scariest positions, especially if you decide to go knee on belly, posture up and start punching. So when we get in this position, it's a high submission percentage for him, and it should be a high get the fuck out of this posi uh, position for me, okay? So first, I really, I, we're gonna kind of play with the underhook escapes today. I'm first gonna create a huge amount of space by bridging as hard as I can. We're talking about the head again. I'm trying to put his head over there and bridge and get my ass away and suck this hand down. Okay, I wanna get huge amount of space, okay? Now my left hand is gonna come through the hole and I'm gonna dive and turn belly down. Boom, all right? From here, if you are fast and family enough, you're gonna come right out the door and you're out, okay? A lot of times it happens to me because I'm not fast and scrambling enough. I have to kind of wrestle out. So same thing again, boom, I create my space and they drive back in, right? They may even tend to switch their hips in here. So switch your hips into my, almost like you're trying to pin me out of the way, out of the way. Yeah, there we go. And now he just start punching me in the face a lot. Bam, bam, bam. This happens, if, yeah, the jiu-jitsu, they're always looking for submissions. My secret was I have the underhook. So it's still a lot of, uh, I still have a very quick way out. I also have, Pretty good defense right here. It's very hard, if I get my hand here, I'm not gonna be dealing as much heavy income, okay, or uh, incoming hits. So now I'm gonna get back to that bridge again, really try to get on my left, uh, my right hip, get my left shoulder underneath him. Now again, I can just come out the back door, or sometimes I can grab the hip. When you grab the hip, it's fun, because you can do shit like that. And then come on top and punch him a lot. So this is one escape series I use a lot in Jiu-Jitsu because as I've been more injured, I have to play more defensive and get out of more weird shit. And I've been finding the underhook. When I get an underhook through a side control escape, so when someone's passing my guard, I quickly find answers out. So again, what I'm looking for, the most important thing, is when I'm here, regardless if he puts his hand over here or not, this actually gives me some much easier escapes. Okay? I want this arm on, this is like a high submissive percentage arm. I, I'm trapped right here. So I'm gonna, I need to get this back to safety, underhook right off the bat. If my opponent is loose here, no problem, okay? A lot of times you need to create a little space. And get well, I tend to body lock right away to keep, make sure I keep my position, kick up, boom, or, did I hit you? Oh, sorry about that. You got your fucking hands up, it's good. All right? Take a message from you. So I'm come here, boom, underhook, okay? Now let's say I go for the underhook and he switches his hips to put pressure, punch me in the face. 
and I get my bump him, they get my left arm free. I can go two on one, come out the back door, or two on one and roll him over fairly easily and come back on top. Yes? Cool, play with it. 